riding the Alpine Epic at Mambula on an e-bike is an awesome experience that I highly recommend if you have a chance. The trail starts at Mambula, takes you down to Halka Gap, then up and over Mount Stirling, down to TBJ, then back up to the Pinnacle, and finally an incredible descent down to Marimba. I rode this on my Giant Trance E Plus SX, which has a 500 watt hour battery. The guide says it's 46 kilometers, but my GPS recorded it as 42.7. It took me about four hours total, with two hours and 40 minutes of moving time. The trail starts out in the village of the Mount Buller, and you just go around behind the back of the hotel, down the road, and follow the signs to the epic. I think I may have actually gone wrong in this part of the trail and missed the single track, but the views along this little bit of fire road were incredible. And I'm 100% sure I was wrong going down this part, but it was actually a fun little blast down a very rough fire trail. straight into the climb up Corn Hill. There were a few technical parts which gave me some issues, but it was a bit of fun. Once you get to the top of the hill, you a quick little fire trail charge down again. Found a guy who had a flat at the bottom, which I helped him fix. And then there's a turn off down this fire road into some more single track, which is quite easy to miss if you're going a bit fast. All good. The dirt on this section is incredible and so grippy. get down to Hapka Gap, which is where you start the Stonefly Ascent. I'm not normally a massive fan of mines, but this was a pretty cool one. You start in what is a temperate rainforest with ferns everywhere, and then climb up and up into the snow gums. Once you hit the snow guns, you know you're at about 1300 metres of elevation. I expected this to be pretty much all climbing, but there are actually a few really fun little descents mixed in. The 
only issue with those descensors, you then back into more climbing. And these are some cool little bridges, probably as close as you get to skinnies in Australia. The views are absolutely stunning, but don't get distracted like I did here. And straight up ahead there is Mount Sterling. Once you get to this four-wheel drive trail, you've reached a bit of a turning point. This is Bluff Spur Hut. From here, you can either go straight down to TBJ or do what I did. I want to make it to the summit and then that way. And you keep going straight up to the summit of Mount Sterling. In my opinion, if you made it this far up, you may as well make it right to the top. Which may be a mistake making it this shit. It was very steep and rocky up that section. My goal was to about 50% battery at the top, which turned out to be about right. This is the final ascent up to Mount Sterling. The side with the trigonometry point, that big metal structure at the top, is the actual summit. I had a decent break up here. The views were absolutely amazing. Full 306 degree panoramas. From there I went back down. This is back at Blasper Hut now and it's just a cruise down to TB Joe. I probably went a little faster than I should have done this trail, but it was a fair bit of fun. Just gotta watch out for walkers on the way up. about a five minute descent and then you're down at TBJ where there is a cafe but unfortunately it was closed today. After that you have a quick creek crossing which I would recommend going round because I've got really wet shoes for the next few hours of riding. In my head I didn't think this would be too much of a climb up it was a massive climb, it just kept going and going. And to be honest, it was a fairly boring bit of trail with not much on it. And I caught a few guys on analog bikes who were not enjoying it. Oh, keep going and going. I'm so lucky to lose all of them and then I have no idea how he's riding some of an analog bike. And I think most people are just pushing up the spot. You then get to a quick high road descent where it's pretty skinny but it's unbelievably rocky and they're big sort of fist sized loose stones everywhere. And to about here I got a flat. And it's about now that I worked it out. And this 
while you're riding this trail, you have to have some basic repair stuff. I had a cush boring, but still didn't save my puncture. But chucked a tube in and then carrying my cush bore around my chest. this enjoy sign this is where you start the amazing descent it took me almost 20 minutes and I reckon if you wanted you could do the whole thing without pedaling once it isn't overly technical but it's the flow you get is just amazing see quite a few times on the trail where people have gone off the side. section where it's pretty dry and dusty again and then you suddenly find yourself washing out slightly. Thank you. 
to get down to the very final section, there are a few little dump sort of shortcuts over the corners. Nice is getting too tired this section to take a few of them must have absolutely buggered. And this is the end of the best descent I've ever done. God damn it. That's awesome. From there you cruise down Plain Creek track. And then you get to the final bit of single track which goes back up alongside the Delatite River. Some cool little bridges. It should be pretty easy, but I was so tired at this section that I was almost missing them. Get some pretty cool views along here. And this is the very final little section. <clears throat> you start to see some buildings and you know you pretty much made it. I was so tired I could barely even stay on the track. <sighs> and this is the finish. Total distance for me is 43.5k, took about 4 hours total time, I was moving for about 2 hours 40 of that, climbed 1,256 metres, and the best part of the trail is descended over 2,000 metres, and I had 3% of battery life left, but I did run on boost for the last little section because I knew I had a bit to go. Definitely recommend it, and I'm working out when I can do it next.